Hello, my brethren, third person shooter aficionados, and fragheads all across the world. I am Renegade Operative, and I have a simple question for you tonight. Were you one of those crazy cats who was extremely disappointed with the potential that Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands offered? Issues that tend to crop up like being overly repetitious, lacking in creativity, and being a game, another Ubisoft IP, whimpering in the wind with what could have been. Especially compared to the diversity of past things like Graw and Future Soldier, which added a few distinct entries in the fleeting tactical shooter genre. Well, you can bet your freaking ass that Ubisoft will rip those core mechanics that were near and almost never dear to your heart and paste the essence of Ghost Recon Wildlands in yet another competitive backdrop called Ghost War PvP. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands Ghost War PvP is not only a mode that's a mouthful to say, somebody called Los Illuminados in here to tell Ubisoft to shorten down their name, anyway I digress, but Ghost War is everything you would have expected from this proposed update along with a few things that need to be questioned, that need to be addressed. I managed to get some hands on time which equated to like four solid hours with this beta. As described, it's an overglorified player versus player mode in the backdrop of Ghost Recon Wildlands. Sadly, if you did play and download this beta exclusively, then you'll realize that a lot of the classes make you feel like you got neutered like Mighty Number no. 9 did on prom night. A lot of classes are not accessible. The classes I did play, however, had different options for my tour on the battlefield. These perks range from having unique properties like differences between the tank class which allows players to take a little bit more damage and divert intel away if your team is compromised. The multi-class recruit option in some ways, his similarities does remind me of the recruit in Rainbow Six Siege. I get those Vietnam flashbacks because the recruit is always a jack of all trades but not necessarily a master until he's in the right hands. He has the most bland and boring and basic loadout but you do get interchangeable weapons like the machine guns, the grenades, and the sniper rifles. The recruit class also had that basic drone perk which I don't think could be swapped out where you can scout out enemies over a certain distance on the map. After selecting a class, Ghost War drops you right into the thick of the battle. It's a standard frag fest where you have to hunt down an enemy player team of four individuals over a relatively large map which is highlighted outside of a yellow rectangle. This kill cone basically tells you that the map is too big, you go outside of it, you die. So you have to fight within bounds of the mission area, so choose your position wisely. You can scavenge for ammo crates, wait patiently, or play aggressive to your leisure, but be aware, not every skirmish ends the same because not every strategy works the same. The beta felt surprisingly hectic and decent even if there was those mechanics from Wildlands like the random shoulder swapping and wonky mechanics that caused a bit of a headache. There were things in the areas that I could use to my benefit like guard towers. They are super helpful for anyone with a sniper class but you risk the danger of enemy players planting up mines or chucking grenades to your flank. Nothing felt too safe, nothing felt too exploitable as far as what I could see which was honestly a good thing. The more I played the game, the more I learned about it, and I learned that there's even classes that can call down unlockable mortar strikes. That's an effective strategy for clearing out potential sniper nests because you see the size of each map you assume is going to turn the meta into a sniper's paradise, but from what I've seen, that wasn't the case. People were getting flushed out and the situation was relatively dangerous. But if you can't beat them, join them, which is what I did. <laughs> Over the course of my play sessions, I picked up a sniper rifle and it was fun. I am still iffy about the way the revive system works. If you're heavily damaged, you don't outright die, nor do you bleed out. So you can always be picked up by the other team members during a match, provided the whole team isn't down. 
The same philosophy also counts for the enemies as well, so while it's risky to pick people up after such a long cooldown period, a smart player can still camp on bodies or bring back an entire freaking team if your enemy team isn't paying attention. So much to your dismay of being in the open like a chicken with his head cut off, you have to sometimes compromise yourself in order to keep the pressure on to prevent an entire team from coming back to life. We get it, right? The aforementioned revival cooldown risks, the mechanic involved, it takes forever to do and pick your team member up, you can get sniped. Is there any awards for this factor? Is there any awards for Ubisoft putting this into the gameplay? And wildly enough, I would say yes. Why do I say that? Because eventually you get this moment where you can hack into a recon base. It has a cooldown meter if you hack into a recon base. Guess what happens next? Chal is all over the place. Cavera has one. It's OVOA. That's not how you spell over. Anyway, you get the idea. That means that you can visibly see every enemy on the radar. This further eliminates the fact that camping for way too long would mess you up in the end. An idea I greatly appreciate it because I'm evil and I'm the devil. All them jokes aside, once you finally beat a team with a 2 to 1 match ratio, that means that the round ends and the game is over and your ghosts claim victory. While this beta was decent, there's also a myriad of problems that popped up while playing it. Like I said, previously the movement can be very wonky in occasions. Moving in a certain way just doesn't feel natural against this tactical backdrop. I also saw a dirty laundry list of bugs that need to be ironed out. It's a giant stain on the experience. I've seen things that Ubisoft needs to thoroughly address, like spawning right on the enemy team, glitch win animations with your gun going on the fritz after a win, getting stuck right outside of the map, and I even went completely invisible during one entire play session. Most of these I even recorded, so for the sake of clarity, you might see them, and they just are too goddamn hilarious to pass up. Overall, Ghost War might grow on you for a few play sessions because it does have intensity in matches, competitive design, and a lack of overpowered feats like one-shot kill vehicles. The overly vast terrain isn't there as well considering the fact that there is a kill cone and the health was balanced well. However, the gameplay still feels repetitive in places and the PvP is the only thing added to this table, which isn't enough meat on the bones here to even pick up Wildlands to play this mode for 30 bucks. The only thing here really is PvP and no changes to the objective. At best, this should have been a separate $15 download with more moves sprinkled in to give it more replay value, more extra flavor, and along with the technical issues, I will say this beta had problems. It's far from stellar, but from the fun that I had, it was a decent fun factor that will unfortunately be overlooked given the fact of how average Ghost Recon Wildlands was. It was flash in the pan substance enough for a few games, but it wasn't really substantial to keep everyone coming back. This is only for diehard fragheads and the most hardcore fans of Ghost Recon Wildlands. Until then, this is Renegade Operative signing off. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my first impressions of Ghost Recon Wildlands Ghost War PvP, and as always, take care.